Hi Virgo, I'm back. It's time to be back. And uh, I'm back in my own home, back in my normal settings, no longer traveling. So um, I just thought I would uh, lay down the last few, um, the last few signs for the month. So um, this one is going to be for the collective of Virgo. So if you if you clicked here, you have clicked um, on Ten of Cups Tarot. My name is Elsie, and I'm your reader. I have um, been a little bit busy. <laughs> I'm so sorry for these readings being a little bit later, but I've been busy trying to tie up loose ends for my job, my day job, and uh, so I've decided that it's time that I go full time to help you guys get what you need. I love this work. I really do. Okay, so the uh, everything you need to know about this reading is in the description. Um, <clears throat> I am open to uh, personal readings, so uh, private readings. If you are interested in that, please take a look. My email address is right in the description there. Please email me. I'll give you some details. And uh, there's a little bit of pricing down there as well. And uh, if you have any other questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. And um, I think that is it. This reading is from now when you see it until the 31st of October. And this is right now we're doing this in 2019. But really, time is uh, fluid. It's not linear. So really, there could be something on my site that would be helpful to you that was read at the very beginning when I started back in March. So if you're interested in looking at any of the other readings, go ahead and do that. All right. And... I will ask in the Archangel Michael to help me as a guide for the reading uh, for the collective Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. And that is for from now, they do this until October 31st. Right now we are in 2019. For the collective Virgo, please, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. All right, we will cut. And here we go. Ready? First card is the strongest, right? Oh, looks like we're looking at the Queen of Pentacles. Um, you could be the Queen of Pentacles, depending on who you are. Again, don't get don't get all tied up in the in the uh, gender of the cards because we're reading energy. We're not reading gender. So um, this Queen of Pentacles is the queen who is, you know, she's pretty well off. She has enough money. Um, she is also very much uh, about. Uh, charity. So, um, you know, as you can see, she dresses beautifully. She People are attracted to her. She walks in a room and people know who she is right away. So she's popular. She's a pillar in her community. She helps the, the poor and the needy. Um, she also um, just helps everyone in the kingdom, anyone that needs help. So she is a kind and generous queen. That could be you or someone that you know. Um, don't forget that uh, these are general readings, and so you can flip-flop the characters in the story. Hmm. And it looks like she is in love. So says the universe. This is a major arcana card, something you cannot change. Um, it looks like the uh, queen or king of pentacles is um, looking at someone whom they might be in love with. Wow, Virgo. <laughs> it looks like you are in love because it looks like somebody is looking at um, looking at marriage. So um, this is, by the way, a card um, of the Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn. So this is the Earth card, by the way. This is the Pentacle card. So this is you and your energy. And then came this, the Love card, which is um, Gemini energy. Um, but this is uh, a major arcana card, something you can't change. And then comes the marriage card. <laughs> so this is also a card of a firm foundation, something that you want to build structurally, that you can build up from the ground that's going to be solid. So um, you want a solid and um, balanced love in this area here. And um, this can also be, I mean, it is a marriage card, but it can also be the firm foundation, the building up of um, a friendship. 
uh, any sort of relationship, really, a relationship that you're building with someone else. It is primarily in marriage. I would say in this case that it does indicate marriage, only because we do have a queen and we do have the lover's card as well. So after the four of wands... Is the magician. So the magician comes to tell you that you have everything that you need to make all the decisions that you need to make successfully. So the magician has mastered um, the swords, has mastered um, the pentacles, has mastered the cups, and has mastered the wands. So you can see that the figure eight right above his head there uh, indicates infinity and the the um, magician comes to tell you that you that you should be using your intuition or that you are intuitive and that you should be using your intuition to uh, make important decisions <laughs> like that. Um, the, uh, the magician um, is the, the first person that the fool goes to visit uh, on the journey. So the fool being card number zero, that's you and I, we are the fool um, until we get more information, right? So we, we are kind of at that point when we're young in our journey, we, we don't have any information. And so we are a little bit foolish and we probably will take some foolish um, chances, it's likely. So the magician is the first person that the fool goes to visit and the magician tells the fool that they have everything that they need or gives them everything that they need in order to for them to complete their safe journey and to learn along the way. And that's what you and I are doing, right? We're in life, we're born. And after we're born, um, it's right then that we start learning, right? We start learning um, faces and uh, voices and things like that. So we start learning right from the very beginning. Um, after the magician comes the Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles is, is the completion. It's the abundance of complete, the completion of abundance. So it's everything that you need, everything that you need in terms of love, um, children, home, um, finances. Although when I look at this depiction here, it looks as though um, the um, the two, the couple that is on the hill, it looks as though um, he has probably left her for someone else. Um, she may have, um, I don't know what's happened here, but the child, if you'll see, I don't know if it's going to focus for you, but the child, you'll see, the child is looking at the mother like, what's going on? Why aren't you coming with us? But it looks as though the father has found his ten of pentacles. So um, yeah, it looks like you could be losing someone to the Ten of Pentacles, or you could be gaining someone to the Ten of Pentacles. Someone here, it looks like, is being left out in the cold, though. Again, Pentacles, um, that is also, that's Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn, so. Hmm, someone is being left out in the cold. So it looks like um, looks like there may be a breakup here. <clears throat> Between these two cards, it looks to me like there may be some sort of, you know, it looks like she's being left out in the cold and uh, he's carrying on with, um, with his Ten of Cups, or I'm sorry, with his Ten of Pentacles. That's what he wants. He wants his abundance. It looks like she's trying to offer something to him to get him to come back, but it's too little too late. Um, so she's remaining left out in the cold. Now the five of pentacles is being left out in the cold. Um, it can be left being left out in the cold in a relationship, you know, in a marriage, in a friendship. It can also be left out in the cold in terms of, you know, you didn't get that raise or you didn't get that promotion, that kind of thing. So this is coming up under the queen of pentacles. So it feels as though the queen of pentacles is being left out in the cold and that um, her king is carrying on um, through life to find his Ten of Pentacles. It looks like he's found her, according to this picture here. Coming up under the Lover's card. Well, that makes sense. It's the Knight of Pentacles. And the Knight of Pentacles does bring in love, brings in gifts. Um, can also be an apology of some kind. Um, so bringing in something positive. Um, he is the slowest moving knight in the deck. So he is the one that is going to f cross the finish line. He is the one that's crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's, and he's just making sure that he's doing the, the best thorough job that he can do. Um, he is coming up under the lover's card. So it looks like he's coming in to drop off a pentacle with the lovers here. Now this could very well be that he is, that, whoops, that's the wrong one, that he is, um, he is coming to, to drop off a pentacle with the person who is experiencing 
um, being left out of whatever is going on. However, that being said, if you look at this Five of Pentacles behind her, behind her is a, a church, a building of some sort with the lights on. So she really can turn around. If she turns around, she can she can go in that building and probably get some help. She's dragging her her child along in the snow. And um, to be honest, she almost looks like this woman here. She looks like her with her hair tucked in. This boy here looks like this little one here. So um, the, yeah, the pentacle is coming in. And that could be the beginning of love. That could be the beginning, um, like I said, it could be an apology. It could be a gift as well. Coming up under the four of wands. Coming up under the Four of Wands is the sun. So the sun illuminates everything, right? So the sun, I always see the sun as sort of a catch-22 because the sun illuminates everything. Um, there's no more guesswork to be done here. So the sun illuminates everything. It cannot occupy the same space as the dark. The dark and the light cannot occupy the same space. So um, when the sun comes in, the sun illuminates everything. There is no guesswork, but there also is no one that can hide from the sun. So... Um, there is no dark corner to hide in essentially so if there is anything that is in the darkness it's going to be exposed because the sun illuminates all things and there's no more guesswork the sun is one of two um, apex cards in the deck the other apex card is the ten of cups and um, this card comes to tell you that things are on the right track that um, all things beautiful are illuminated you'll see that there's um, uh, sunflowers growing in the background the sky is beautiful even the dog is there everybody's in love um, so this is your happiness and it's coming up under this marriage card here and coming up under the magician Virgo the ten of pentacles or the, the king of pentacles guess what we have a soulmate connection we have a match set here so we have the king and the queen of pentacles so the king of pentacles is the book smart guy he is the one who is educated he is the money guy he's the business owner the cfo the ceo he's the guy who um is really abundant and loves to share he is a charitable king as well and that's why he's paired off with the queen um so this guy is um is your soulmate he is the person that has come in for the marriage or will be coming in for the marriage um just keeping in mind that all things uh when it comes to time are um you know all all things coming when it when in terms of time is everything is fluid right so it can this reading can be uh happening tomorrow or the next day it can also be happening five months from now or next year or five years from now um we never really know when, when the time frame is. I've dropped a card. Hang on. And it's gone under the table. One more dive. Whew, second dive got it. <laughs> okay. All right. So coming up under the Ten of Pentacles. Abundance and love and in finances. Hmm. And then we have the Queen of Cups. So it's possible that we have maybe a third party situation happening here. We do have two queens on the table. Um, we have the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is the, the queen who is um, kind and loving and emotional and he just wants to wrap around you and make sure that she scares all of your sadness away, that kind of thing. So she is really the kind and loving woman. She is also very, um, she's very much a leader as well. Um, this is the card of uh, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. So two queens and a king. Oh, look at this, though. So we do have, in the background, we do have the lovers. In the foreground, we have someone left out in the cold. There are two queens in this depiction here. So it looks like somebody, uh, the Queen of Cups is coming up under the Ten of Pentacles. It could be the Queen of Cups is who is the one that is going to be left out in the, uh, in the cold. Next card coming up, 
is the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords is a card of healing. So um, it could be a relationship has gone sour here. And um, uh, according to the ten, the ten of Pentacle cards, which I'm kind of leaning here on, is um, it looks as though the Queen of Cups may be left out. And after a relationship comes to a culmination or comes to an end, then there really is some healing that needs to take place. Healing, rest, relaxation, meditation, all the things that you should be doing to take care of yourself. Eating right, drinking right, all of that kind of stuff. Um, when relationships break, it, it's sad. It's like a, a death, death in the family, especially if it had been a marriage or a long-running um, relationship that is uh, a cohabitated relationship or just, you know, dating for a very long time. And everybody goes through those changes in your family. It's not just the couple that are that are breaking up. It's the couple and then the children get involved and the families have to separate. And, you know, families tend to love their their son-in-law, wife, wife-in-law, you know, that kind of thing. So um, daughter-in-law, not, not wife-in-law, sorry. Um, but it looks like things are going to be moving fast from here. So that's probably why this rest and relaxation is needed. Uh, this healing needs to take place because if this new relationship is taking off, it looks like it is going to be taking off quickly. This is a vehicle though. So this person that it that um, you are uh, perhaps going to be coupling up with um, could be far from you. It, there could be a distance between you and there could be in need of a vehicle to get to you so um or you to get to them and uh so that's what this is this is the chariot and the person that drives the chariot has to be very strong um because if if she lets go of the chariot um and and lets it um lets it carry on their own without a driver everybody in the chariot could die so the person who is driving that chariot is very strong that's the card of cancer by the way and then comes the moon. And the moon, um, it's a representation of fear. Um, so this, you could have a fear of moving really quickly because you're not ready, you're not rested enough for it, you haven't healed. Um, so this could be like, you know, getting out of a relationship like a marriage and then boom, popping into another relationship. And this can be, it can be scary because you just don't know what's gonna happen. You're not healed, you're carrying old luggage from the last relationship to the new relationship. And um, you really have to be fully healed and rested before you can carry on the next relationship. Or you are just um, heading for um, a repeat of what you just came out of. You need, to, you need to heal everything before you can start things anew. So it looks like the, the, um, the moon comes to tell you, you know, that there is a fear of, of perhaps moving into the next relationship. Um, without having that rest and relaxation. I feel like it's a warning because it is major arcana. The chariot is also major arcana. So it looks like things are moving quickly, but the, the universe is telling you that things are going to move quickly and it's okay to be scared and um, very careful about um, the things that go on. Just make sure that you are rested, that you have healed, or the next relationship is just going to be a repeat. There is going to be a lot of passion in the relationship though because it looks like there's a new... Um, a new time and passion here, brand new passion. Um, it looks like it is going to be, you know, after this, perhaps after this marriage or this, um, this person that you're in love with, building the firm foundation. And, you know, that naturally, of course, passion gets involved there. Um, passion uh, in, this, in this reading, I believe, is um, passionate love. I think that's what, uh, what that's speaking of here. And I think you're scared of that. I think you're scared of that, Virgo, of getting back into, right away, getting back into passionate love. That maybe things need to go a little slower. It is going to be a victory, though, because this guy is coming back from not only winning the fight, but winning the war. And uh, he is, you can see that, you know, everything he touches there lights up electric. He's, he's um, coming back stronger, smarter. He's more knowledgeable about life. He knows more about empathy and sympathy. He's seen a lot in the war, uh, a lot that has scarred him, scarred his mind. So um, he is coming back, he or she is coming back from the war, um, a different person. And so a completely different person. Um, so many things being seen and learnt in, in that 
uh, capacity has to change a person. So um, this is coming back for victory. Everyone is really glad that this person has come back from the war. And um, you can see that there's people on the, on the balcony, there's people cheering on the ground, and they're holding up their sticks in, um, you know, in uh, victory, you know, helping him come back. Um, they're appreciating him and his victory because he spent some time away, he or she spent some time away fighting. because there's a new start to be had here. So the Fool, as I said, the Fool is the card number zero, and the Magician is the first person that the Fool comes to see after heading out on their way. The Fool is just taking all the basics, their little friend, the dog, whatever's in their backpack, and um, they're going to see the Magician. And the Magician's gonna give them, give the Fool what, what he or she needs in order to start anew. Um, and you would have to do that after coming back from the fight. So it looks to me as though um, there has been a relationship that is broken here, um, perhaps a divorce, um, and then there is someone, the Queen of Pentacles, uh, which is, like I said, Taurus, um, Virgo, and Capricorn. Um, there is someone here who is jumping into the next relationship, which tells me that there may have been a separation period in that, in that relationship, that first relationship, and in, during that separation period, perhaps you met someone who you felt was your magician. And um, you are um, exhorted here in this reading by the universe to make sure that all your ducks are in a row, that you've healed, that um, you aren't working from behind fear, from the, like I like to say, from behind the fear wall. A lot of people operate from behind the fear wall. They will only do certain things. Um, the Ace of Wands is coming in for passion. This person's coming back from the war. Um, uh, having been a new person and they're looking for a new start. So I don't know what's happened in the time that they've been gone, but it sounds or looks like that perhaps there has been a, a breakup of a relationship while they were gone. Um, then comes the Wheel of Fortune and it's turning in your favor. And it's turning in the favor of this reading. Um, comes up after the Fool, which is amazing. The the Wheel of Fortune, which is the none of my business card, because I can never clarify it if I ask for a time frame. This is the, the divine timing card. So essentially it's, it's the universe saying it's up to us. It's not up to you. And because then comes the Ten of Cups. So having this new start, it looks like it's going to be very a very good idea. It looks like it's going to be successful. The Ten of Cups is here. It's happy life, happy wife. You now have both of the Apex cards. 78 cards in the deck. What come in here left? 78 cards in the deck and you got both Apex cards. That is good news. And coming up right after the Wheel of Fortune, which is turning in your favor, Virgo, that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Because somebody has decided that they're bringing in a cup of love. And um, the Knight of Cups is a knight that does make it in. Um, the Knight of Cups does give love, brings a cup of love to you. So whoever, whomever you are going to be um, partnering up with is very much in love with you very much so. And I would say by the passion card here that they're very attracted to you. So I think you two have very good chemistry in terms of emotion and and passion. Looks like one of you is scared though. One of you is scared to move quickly. Um, I'm going to take a guess and say that that's you because um, I feel as though it's you that has had the um, breakup in the marriage. Uh, marriage or a long-term relationship. Um, I really urge you again, once again, Virgo, to make sure that you are healing. Uh, make sure that you have everything that you need in terms of healing, because um, if you want this next relationship to work, you really need to do the hard work. Dropped another card, gonna dive, hang on. All right, <laughs> here we go. Okay, last card coming out here. And then maybe we'll go for an oracle. Maybe we'll go for a power of love card. I've got some new love cards. So last card coming out is, oh, it's the King of Swords. Look at that. So uh, the King of Swords is the king who always is speaking mind over heart. He's not making any emotional 
decisions. He's always making logical decisions. Book smart. He is the guy who's the money guy. He is king. He takes care of everybody in terms of finances. So um, let me take a look here now. I thought we had another king and we do. So we have a king of pentacles and then we also have this king who's the king of swords. So the king of pentacles and the king of swords, I think those are the only kings that we have. So I would say that we have two kings here. Um, we have a soulmate connection and two kings. I would say that this is probably a third party connection of some kind, or there was a third party uh, waiting for you to get out of this marriage so you could get into the next relationship. That could very well be. So it could be either the king of swords or it could be the king of uh, pentacles. Although the king of pentacles is the one that looks like um, they are your uh, perfect match. Under the deck, bottom of the deck, six pentacles, which is reciprocity. So it looks like you found someone who is going to ground you and give you reciprocity. So, you know, going to put as much into the relationship as you put into the relationship. And it's going to be a really good fit. That being said, we're going to look at the power of love. It's a new, uh, new deck that I have here. And the Power of Love deck is by Activation Cards. James Van Prague has made this deck. And we will just pull a couple of these. See if we can tie things up here. And we have Empathy. You feel and understand the emotions of another um, in, in the service of love. Okay. That's nice. Um, we do have to have empathy in order to be able to exit a relationship in a manner which is conducive with adulthood. You know, you guys, you don't have to run it off into the ditch before you end a relationship. You can actually sit down with your spouse and say, you know, what's not working here for me? This is what's not working for me. Is there anything that you, that's not working for you? And you really can back your way out of the relationship in a kind manner. Um, it, it's possible for it to be done. We did it with my son. He's 19, unscarred, and I'm still really good friends with my ex. So, um, and I, as I should be, because that's his dad. That's my son's dad. Okay, empathy is always, always needed in a separation or divorce. Also is compassion. Compassion, you demonstrate the language of the heart by actively sharing and living love. And if you're sharing and living love with everyone, including people who have done you wrong, then there is no reason for you to have the stress and anxiety of uh, leaving a relationship. It can be done in terms of kindness, you know, empathy and sympathy. Detachment, you are releasing old patterns and old ideas and no longer serve the highest ideals of love. You are releasing old patterns and ideas that no longer serve your highest ideals of love. So if you are coming out of a relationship and going into another, you are in fact detaching. Yeah, detachment. You are changing what you think love is. You are changing your identification of love um, or your um, definition of what love looks like to you. And we do that all the time. Every time we get into a new relationship, we always look at a new definition of love. What did I not have in this last relationship that I want in this new relationship? So that's what we're always doing. We're always redefining what we think love is. Um, one last card I think I'm gonna pull for you is the Wisdom of the Oracle. We will pull one Oracle card. This really is a beautiful deck with beautiful depictions. I love it. Um, the Wisdom of the Oracle is by Colette Baron Reed, and she's one of my favorite um, card card maker people. All right. And we have new life. Doesn't that just tell us everything. I don't even think we have to look up a meaning of the card here. Um, this is a new life. In fact, it is a new life. The Queen of Pentacles, um, Virgo, it looks like you're looking at a new life with someone that you're in love with. Maybe you're getting married again, or you're looking at a very strong commitment in building the uh, four corners of a very stable foundation. Um, it looks as though somebody has left somebody in the dust. and um, But it looks like the person that you're going to be with is very attracted to you very much loving, is willing to give you reciprocity, and it's time for you to be happy. So it's it's your time for a new life. And um, look, she's waking up to a new life. How beautiful is that? 
That's the most beautiful thing I've seen. Um, and it looks like it's card number 39, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, one and two is three. So the uh, threes are, you know, knowing that your angels and, and guides are close to you and that you're making good decisions, you're on the right track. So that's it for you, Virgo. Um, if you would uh, feel so inclined, if you'd like to make a donation, you can find a link down in my about page. Um, if you uh, would like to book a private reading, please uh, also look in the description. You'll see my email address there. Give me an email and we will make a time to give you a private reading. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, please let me know down below. And uh, I'd love to hear your comments because I'm always willing to um, converse back and forth in comments. And uh, thank you, Virgo. Thanks for coming and clicking and sharing and letting your friends know who I am. Thanks so much. Bye.